Hello and welcome back to Cock Dice. In tonight's video, I'm going to be showing you how to turn an assault intercessor into a chaplain. This is yet another budget space marine conversion and we're going to do this one properly on the cheap this week. So your first job is to select an assault intercessor. I'm going to be picking this one here who is, uh, I'll show you on the screen now, uh, the one running forward pointing his bolt pistol. So your first job is to snip out the bits you need from your sprue. So as always, first job is to get the right bits from the sprue. I want 20. Now we're going to assemble this guy's body, uh, leaving the arms off and the backpack off for the moment and get him stuck on a base so he's got a little bit of time to dry off before we start doing some work on him. So as usual, trim all the uh, mod lines off and it's connected to the sprue. So once he's had a chance to dry off, we're going to get on with the most iconic part of, ah, all right, possibly the second most iconic part of a chaplain. Gonna start with his chest plate. We're gonna remove this and you've seen me do this before in other videos. So just take a very sharp knife and we're gonna work upwards towards the neck piece and just very carefully trim this down without cutting your thumb or cutting the neck plate. Now we've got that pretty smooth, we're gonna move on to the next step. And for this, you're gonna to need to raid your bits box for these little doodats. So what you need to do now is grab one of these doodats from your bits box. These are the little reliquies, that's why I call them, I'm going to call them doodats. Because um, I can't pronounce the other one. Grab one of these, we're going to put that in the centre of his chest. This is just to give him a bit of interest and add more skulls to him, because this is 40k and you always need more skulls in 40k. Um, you can either go for these kind of pointed ones and make it a bit more gothic or a nice square one which will fit closer up to the neckline uh, and a bit squarer on his chest piece here. For today's video, I'm going to go with this one on the end here. It's got three rather cool skulls in it. So we'll chuck them to one side. So that's the kind of thing you want. Now we're just going to do one little thing which is take off this on the top. Now once this bit's cleaned up, we're going to add a dab of glue right to the centre of his chest. And so, we're going to grab our tweezers because this is a tiny little piece. So you want to drop it nice and centrally on the chest piece here, following the lines of the torso rather than the rest of his body, because obviously it's attached to his torso. I've butted mine up against the top of the collar here. Uh, there's, I know there's a gap there, but once we fill this out with the rib cage, then you're not going to see that at all. So, give them a little bit of time to dry, and while we're doing that, we'll mix up some green stuff. So once you've got a decent amount of green stuff mixed up, we're going to drop a bit on either side of his chest. So I reckon about that much. Keep your sculpting tool nice and wet. And we're just going to shape this to be about halfway up this central icon. Just work it in, leaving a little gap around the top. And then we're going to stop it at the bottom of his um, torso there. And there we have it, one super smooth chest. So, now's the hard bit. We want to do, how many ribs should we have? I think we're going to have four ribs, so we're going to need three lines here. Should have started in the centre. So mark out your position of where they want to be. Now this one's going to come kind of straight across here. This one's straight back here. As you can see, we're starting to get a bit of a shape to this now. So we're going to try and start to round these off and I've folded a bit of green stuff there. Keep them as smooth as we can as we go in. But essentially lay out the basic lines, deepen them, deepen them, deepen them very slowly. And then we're going to start just taking the edges off each of these um, lines and making these into kind of slightly rounder bones. It takes a little bit of time. Keep your sculpting tool nice and wet as you're doing this. Just run it at a slight angle. So we're, we're essentially just sliding it along the edge here. Keeping it nice and wet. 
bearing in mind once you get back to about this sort of point this is going to be hidden by the arm that's on here so you can imagine so arm's going to be on there I'm probably as usual going to stick some um, uh, purity seals and stuff on him so you're not going to see this back corner too badly what we mainly want to do is get the centre nice and clean and try and get these ribs as even as possible. Now you can spend as much or as little time on this phase as you like. I'm going to stop there because quite simply I'm trying to get this video filmed to fit a 10 or 15 minute uh, tutorial. However, you guys have all night if you wish and just keep working away and working away. Try and keep them even. I know that I've got my two. I'll top to a little thinner here. I'm gonna try and even them out a little bit off camera. And I shall go and get the other side done as well. And we'll be back in a minute or two. So after 20 minutes or so of putty pushing, I have a fairly reasonable looking rib cage. Obviously, the longer you spend on it, the more you work on it, the straighter your lines will get and the smoother it will be. But I'm pretty happy with that, bearing in mind you're not going to see a huge amount of it once I've covered him in uh, purity seals and stuff. So, pop this guy to one side. And we're now going to work on the second most iconic part of a chaplain, his chainsaw. Or rather, lack of chainsaw. Now there are loads and loads and loads of good options for your chaplain's main armament. It's obviously his Crozius Arcanium. The first thing you're going to need is some sort of shaft for it. Um, you can build your own from scratch, like I did with the Librarian's Force Staff um, in the last video, or last conversion video, or you can head out into your bits box and have a good look around. From Age of Sigma, especially the Chaos range, there's loads and loads of really, really good maces. Uh, I believe this one is from the Chaos Knights kit. Um, to be fair, that almost looks the part anyway. That's a pretty good option if you want to take it, do it fairly easily. Force axes, uh, power, power force axes, power axes. Um, so this one's a Space Wolf one, but again, they've got a nice shaft with a, a decent um, uh, handle and you can use some of the power gear at the top to kind of keep it um, looking cool. Well, the option I'm going to use tonight, which is this power mace from Death Watch? Ooh. I think that's a Death Watch kit one. It's got random extra symbols on it, which I quite like. So, we need this. I only need it from the wrist downwards, so we can cut the rest off, and I'm going to take the head off. So, for the top of the uh, Crozius Arcanium, there's loads of really good options. If you're going for a chapter-specific one, um, have a look at, yeah, I think that's Sanguinary Guard, uh, that's going to be Space Wolves, Blood Claws, well, I've long fags. I've absolutely no idea which one that's for. Uh, it's pretty cool looking. So either of these would do a rather nice job of topping his Crozius. If you're going for a out-of-the-box um, chapter, then these icons from the backpacks for the Command Squad, uh, Terminators, I think as well, have some pretty cool icons. So you can read them for any of them. Tonight, I'm going to be using this one here, uh, mainly because it's flattest. Uh, this is from the Stern Guard kit. So this is going to be a really, really simple conversion. I'm going to leave the hand on there for now. I'm going to take this off as high as possible, just under the uh, top of the mace, and I'm not going to lose that arm there. I'm going to try not to bend the shaft too much. I want this to come off nice and straight. So just clean up the top of it, get it as straight as you can. Put that to one side. Oh, I've had to just test fit this. So I'm going to take the bottom of this off and cut it just under this Terminator symbol there and level that off. Now, you could just stick the two together. That would weld fairly reasonable. Yeah, it would. It would, honestly. Um, however, because it's a little bit sticky outy I am going to um, stick a pin through it just to attach the two together and make sure it's got a really nice strong bond so that if I catch it while gaming it's not going to ping off, ruin my paint job and really annoy me. 
So just grab your pin vise drill, find the centre of the handle. And then we're going to lop his hand off at the wrist. So get a nice sharp knife again, find the model's wrist. We don't want to cut too far that way, we're going to cut straight down through this. On your Indominus uh, model, we're going to take the um, chainsaw off at the wrist, just work your knife underneath. We're going to try and save, oh, if you're in the centre of the screen, you can see it. Uh, we're going to try and save the Indominus um, van brace thing. So we're just going to put a knife in here just a little bit. Then need to go all the way through from this side, flip it over, and then work back the other way. Then once you've got his chainsaw, uh, hand off we're going to need to just work into this a little bit and remove some of this spare plastic here to give us plenty of space to fit this new hand in. So once we've finished shaping up the arm we're going to get this glued onto his body nice and quickly. We are getting into the end of this conversion now and then we're going to glue his hand into here. I'm going to leave this off for a bit. I suspect I'm going to have it sitting this way around but I want to this to just dry off a little bit and get the rest of the model finished up. So next we're going to replace his rather boring normal shoulder pad with this slightly more exciting skull one. This is, again comes from the stone guard kit. So you've seen me do this loads of times before. We're going to clip his shoulder pad off just following the inside curve. I'll just get this done and I'll be back in a moment. So there we have it. We'll get this whacked on to the model now. So it's one that sticks through. So sometimes you get these little um, the easy build sticks, pillars, whatever they're called, that just stick through. So I just push them through and snip the end off it. Get your shoulder pad glued on. Obviously, if your green stuff's not dried yet, don't stick your thumb on it when you're doing the rest of the model because you'll ruin it. There is a third iconic part to any good chaplain, and that's his head. You can use any head you like. I'm going to use one of my favourite heads, skull crit head from the Reaver kit. Now I'll bob this on here. Now I'm never one to keep things simple, so this guy's going to get this awesome mane from the Stern Guard kit because um, it looks cool, and we're hearing the name of cool. It's a dude with a pimp stick that runs across the battlefield yelling battle hymns. Okay then, so we're now into the end game of this model. We've done all the kind of key components. We just need to jazz him up just a little bit. So head over to your bits box and if you give me one moment, we're going to need to find all the sorts of gubbins. There we go. Gubbins, more gubbins, more gubbins. Bring those reliquies. So the sort of things you're looking for is obviously we want loads of purity skull scrolls. What is up with my camera tonight? We want loads of purity seals, shields, uh, scroll work, anything like that. Grab all that sort of stuff. You'll also want to grab some sort of loincloth. So you can go like I have with other videos. You can go for one of these. Um, Night haunts robes and do a kind of tattered loincloth hanging down between his legs. This is Space Marine Command Kit. This model it wouldn't fit on very well because he's running, but if you've got a more static one, that's awesome. Just cut it above these um, reliquies in the middle and drop it on over his belt. Catching that. Again, if you're doing a more static pose, this is really cool. This is from the Corpse Grinder Cult from Necromunda. I've got a load of these. They just look awesome. I've no idea what I'm going to use them for. If I was doing a static model now, this would be on it because it's got a skull. It's got the tassely bits. It just looks pretty awesome. I'm going to go with something a bit simpler. Ooh. This is the spare um, reliquy kind of chain that comes from the aggressors kit so again it's a nice cheap part this is supposed to be a cheap model so let's keep it easy what i'm going to have to do here i'm going to have to clip off this side because that's going to catch with his leg like so and i'm just going to clean this up quickly and stick it on 
So moving on from that, next thing we're going to add is a book, some sort of holy prayer book. This was from the Dark Angels kit. Uh, I'm not sure which one, but it's definitely Dark Angels because I carved a Dark Angels sword off of the back. You ain't going to see the sword, so you can leave it on if you like, but I don't want to have a Dark Angel symbol on my model because he's going to be a Blood Raven as usual. So we're going to drop it on here. So I'm just going to bend this piece over just a wee little bit, like so. Pick them up without trashing everything I've just built. And then we'll stick it to this plate here. Oh, hang on. Sticking out like so as he's running. And from here up, we just want to keep adding um, purity seals and gubbins to him until he looks the part. So I'm going to crack on with that and I'll be back in a minute, hopefully with a finished model. So there we have it. That's the model done for tonight. I've obviously added loads of purity seals, some down here, here, on his gun here, uh, down the back of his leg, some on his backpack, this um, scroll here on his shoulder pad. He's obviously had his chapter symbol added. Added a shield onto his arm here. It bulks out a little bit more than I wanted to. Um, but I think it does the business. This has had a tiny symbol, which I've just realized I've knocked out of center when I've stuck it on. Squeeze that back. Again, from one of the infiltrator kits. Knee pad for the infiltrator kit. Um, yeah, basically just add stuff upon stuff upon stuff until you're pretty happy with it. So I'm going to get this guy sprayed up and painted and you can hang around a second and see a paint version of him coming up right now. And thanks for joining us here at The Clock Dice. Why not like this video and add a comment below? It really helps boost the channel. And while you're at it, if you click on the icon below, you can subscribe to the channel for all the latest updates as soon as they're live. Why not check out some of our other videos and playlists? You can click on the ones on screen right now. Take care, and we'll see you next time.